Do I, can I use my uh, lapel mic? All right. If I have a Bible, turn to Isaiah chapter 14. One of the major prophets, Isaiah chapter number 14. I didn't realize that I have a time limit tonight. I have to finish by uh, 7.45, so I'll try my best to, uh, to be lit, like, like five minutes over. That should be fine. So Isaiah 14, look at verse number 12. Isaiah 14, verse number 12. Now, since today is Wednesday night, we're going to do a little Bible study. So the title of the sermon tonight is called The Profile of Satan. A profile of Satan. Today we're going to learn a lot of things about Satan. Now, since Satan is our biggest adversary as Christians, it makes sense to know what Satan is like, right? To know what he uses to deceive us, to know what his devices are. Now, the word Satan is mentioned 56 times in the Bible. The word devil is mentioned 61 times in the Bible. The word dragon is mentioned 19 times. And the word serpent is mentioned many times. So, the Bible definitely has a lot to say about Satan. So now number one, let's talk about the, the, the description of Satan. The description of Satan. In Isaiah chapter 14 verse number 12, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did, didst weaken the nations? So in Isaiah 14 verse 12, we have the name of the devil, right? The Lucifer. We also have the title of Satan, which is son of the morning. Again, this is not part of the sermon, but this is one of the reasons you should use the King James Bible. In the New International Version, the same verse reads, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. So, in the King James Bible, the title attributed to Satan is son of the morning, right? But in the New International Version, the Bible calls Satan the morning star. Now, here's the problem. In Revelation chapter chapter 22, the Bible describing the Lord Jesus Christ as the bright and morning star. Here's what the, the NIV translator did. In the King James, the Bible calls Satan son of the morning. In the NIV, the Bible calls Satan the morning star, which equivalents Satan with Jesus Christ. In essence, the NIV is saying Jesus Christ is casting, falling from heaven. Again, that's one, one of the many reasons you should use the King James Version. So in Isaiah 14, verse 12, we have the name of Satan, which is Lucifer. We also have the title of Satan, which is the son of the morning. Next, we see the nature of the devil. Look at verse number 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, notice the word, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, yet shall thou be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Notice the word I, I, I keep repeating over and over again. Now, one of the nature of Satan is he didn't say that he wants to replace God, but he wants to be like God. Okay? Now, we see. A lot of attributes of Satan being present in nowadays world. We have a lot of idolatries going on. Now, one of the attributes of Satan present in this passage is selfishness, right? He's focusing on himself. I will be this. I will be that. Now, the Bible predicts that. The Bible says this, know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of own selves. What can be more selfish than committing adultery and killing your own babies? What can be more selfish than right and loot these people who make an honest living? What can be more selfish than committing adultery against your spouse? What can be more selfish than take another innocent life? So we see the nature of Satan. He is the source of idolatry, but he's also full of selfishness. Go to, go to Ezekiel chapter 28. You are in Isaiah, you, you, can, you have Jeremiah, Lamentation, uh, and you have the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter, chapter, chapter number 28. So we've seen the name of Satan, we've seen the nature of Satan, but let's talk about the origin of Satan. Ezekiel 28, look at verse number 11. Ezekiel 28, verse number 11, the Bible says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, take up, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, now, I don't have time to develop that, but king of Tyrus is a type, is, is representing the, the Satan himself. And say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Thou seals up some full of, notice, wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Verse 13, Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. What's he talking about? When the serpent tempted Eve, right, to sin? 
and every precious stone was thy covering: the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets, of thy pot, of thy pipes, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Now we see a lot of things about Satan here that he is a musical creature, right? We've seen uh, uh, the the pipes and tablets was created in him. Well, it might be it's built in him. We, we don't know exactly the details. So we know he's a musical being, but we also know uh, he wears a lot of precious stone jewelry. So we also know he's full of beauty, full of wisdom. He's full of treasure. Well, it's yeah, very interesting. These are the same things the world is pursuing these days, right? Satan is corrupting you with bad music. Satan, people pursue fancy clothes. People pursue beauty. They pursue wisdom. They pursue science falsely so-called, right? And they pursue money. They pursue treasure. But look at verse number 14. The Bible says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have said thee also, Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. So one thing we realize that Satan is a created being, therefore Satan is not God. He, Satan is not even equal to God. And Satan was perfect until he has sinned. But there's another thing I want to realize that the Bible calls Satan the anointed cherub. Go to Ezekiel chapter number 1. The anointed cherub. Now let's take a look at what is, exa- what is exactly a cherub. Now the word anointed has a, has, a, has a sense of chosen, in charge of something. So a lot of people speculate Satan is actually in charge of a group of angels. Satan is pretty powerful. He's chosen uh, for some kind of duties. We don't really know exactly what that is. But another, another description of Satan that, that Satan is he is is a cherub. Now, what is a cherub? Ezekiel chapter 1, look at verse number 5. The Bible says, Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Now, I don't have time to develop that, but later the Bible referring to these four living creatures as the cherubs. And this was their appearance, and they had the likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. So what is a cherub? A cherub is a four-winged angel. We have the prefix cherub, right? Now, there's another type of angel in the Bible, which is called the seraphims. The, the prefix says is six. So seraphim has six wings. Cherub has four wings. Now, notice each cherub has four faces and four wings. And this comes to be very significant. Look at verse number seven. The Bible describing their feet, and their feet was straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of uh, burnished brass, and they had the hands of a man under their wing on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Just imagine a creature with four faces, four wings, and, and a cow's foot, straight foot, hovering around you. Verse number nine. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned out when they went. They went every one straight forward, which means uh, these cherubs, they, they always go straight forward. That makes sense, because if you have four faces, no matter which way you go, it's still straight forward. That's why they don't turn, because they have four faces. But verse number 10 give you the likeness of the four faces. The Bible says, as for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of, number one, a man, and the face of a lion and on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. So each cherub had four faces, right? What are the four faces? Like a man, a lion, an ox, an eagle. Now remember that. Go to Ezekiel chapter 10. I want to remember the four faces of a cherub of Satan, a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. Ezekiel chapter 10 gives you another description of cherubims. Ezekiel 10, look at verse number 14. Ezekiel 10 verse 14, the Bible says, And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a what? A cherub. And the second face was the face of a man. The third, the face of a lion. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. What is missing? See, in Ezekiel chapter 1, the Bible describing the Satan, uh, the cherub has a face of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. In Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 14, the Bible said they have a cherub, a man, a lion, and an eagle. So the Bible substitutes the word ox with cherub. So here's my theory, all right? Don't hold, uh, don't hold, me, don't hold against me. This is what, what I believe. Even though each cherub has four faces, the primary face of a cherub is a face of an ox. 
Now this is significant because what, what animal do most people portray the devil to be? An ox, right? A cow. What animal do the, in, the, the, the Hindu worship? A holy cow. What do the, what did the children of Israel make in the wilderness? A golden calf. See, there's nothing new under the sun. So we see Satan has four faces, and I believe the primary face of the devil is a face of an ox, which makes sense. A lot of people, they're worshiping animals, worshiping a holy cow, people making golden calf. Again, it's a picture of the devil. Pretty interesting. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. So number 1, we've talked about the descriptions of Satan. Satan is not like... Well, a lot of angels are, di- are different than you think. It's not just little cubits sh- 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 shooting arrows. They are pretty mighty scary creatures. Four wings and four, f- four faces. Number two, I- number two, I want to talk about the devices of Satan. The devices of Satan. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, look at verse number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 10. The Bible says, To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything to whom I forgive it, for your sakes forgive I it in the person of Christ, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now in context, there is a man who is undergoing church discipline, but after he showed true repentance, these people still doesn't forgive him, right? So Paul is admonished them, you know, you should forgive it in the person of Christ, which I believe even man Christ has already forgiven his sins, you should also so forgive him since he's already shown true repentance. But why they should forgive him? Verse 11 said, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So what's the reason that Paul wants them to forgive that person who showed true repentance? Is One of the devices of Satan is actually a hardened heart and, un- and, and an unforgiving heart. Because when, once Satan can make your heart harden, he will, he, he, he will destroy the fellowship and the unity of the church. So one of the advice of Satan, whom I believe from this passage is a hardened heart, more specifically an unforgiving heart, which ultimately results in the lack of fellowship. And that's why, that's why we as Christians should try our best to make it to church. Online church is not the same. Now, I get it. Pe- people who are sick, people who, can, who have to stay at home, I get that. But if you can't make it to a physical location, congregation of the believers, do it. Because one of the things that's lacking in online church is fellowship. The Bible says in Acts chapter, 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, that's preaching, and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. The house of God is supposed to be a house of preaching, of fellowship, of, of food, and also of prayer. Okay, Now, go to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. So we see one of the devices of Satan is giving you an unforgiving heart is to sow discord, destroy the unity. But another device of Satan is possession. Now, we've heard a lot of story of, of, of demon possessions, right? In, in the gospel account, there are tons of devil possessions. But has Satan himself possessed anyone? Now, let, let me just give you uh, what appears to me the scripture teaches. There are only two people in the Bible that's given the name Son of Perdition. Judas Iscariot and the Antichrist in, in, in the end time. In John chapter 17 verse 12, the Bible says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name, that uh, those thou givest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the Son of Perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, Son of Perdition is referring to Jesus Christ. Now, you don't have to turn there, but the Bible says in John chapter 13, And after the sob, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, that, that thou doest, do quickly. So it appeared to me that Satan does possess Judah, uh, Judas Iscariot, and Judas Iscariot, Judas Iscariot is called the son of perdition. Go to Second Thessalonians chapter number 2. Second Thessalonians chapter number 2. I forgot to tell you, we're going to go to a lot of Bible scriptures tonight, so please get ready, fasten your seatbelt, and ready to turn for the Bible study. Now, the word perdition means, from dictionary, the abode of Satan. Pretty interesting. And in the Bible, I believe Satan has only possessed 
one person and that he's going to possess another person in the, time, in the end time. So we see Judas Iscariot is called the son of perdition and Satan did enter into him to fulfill the betrayal against Jesus Christ. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon set shaking in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So we see Paul is admonishing them that a lot of people are confusing the timing of the day of Christ. Uh, we don't want to go into what that really means. So Paul is saying, don't be deceived, that day shall not come. Verse number 3, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin, which is the Antichrist, be revealed. Notice the son of perdition who opposes and exalted himself above all that's called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, very similar to Isaiah 14, when the Bible describing Satan himself. And we know in Revelation chapter 13, when, when Antichrist received a deadly wound, Satan came into him, Satan possessed him, and then he became, he, 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 he was originally the man of sin, then he became son of perdition after Satan possessed him, um, in the Revelation chapter 13, then he said for the great tribulation, uh, and, like end time 101 in 30 seconds. Anyway, um, so we see Satan has only possessed Judas Iscariot and and the Christ in the end, end time, and both of, the, both of them, these are the only people that the Bible calls some uh, perdition. Pretty interesting. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. So we've seen the device of Satan. Number 1 is a, an unforgiving, a hardened heart. Number 2 is possession. Number, number 3, I want to talk about Satan wants to prevent the salvation of the lost. Satan wants to prevent salvation of the lost. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse number 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, what ministry? What I believe is the ministry of reconciliation, of sharing the gospel. As we have received mercy, we faint not. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Here's what Paul is saying. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has given us the ministry to share the gospel, we need to walk and act like the children of God, so the world may believe that we serve Christ. Verse number 3. The Bible says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Here's what, what Paul is saying. The unsaved will suffer if we don't share the gospel. If the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. But notice verse number 4. In whom the God of this world... Who is he talking about? Satan, right? In whom the God of this world has blinded the, the minds of them which believe not, lest so that so that the, the glory so that the glory of the gospel won't be manifest unto them. So one of the devices of the devil is prevent the salvation of the lost. So what I submit unto you is every time you go soul winning, you go door knocking, you are fighting a spiritual battle against the devil, right? And according to the promise, we will win. I wouldn't know it, right? So that's why we should go out to, because one of the devices of Satan is prevent the salvation of the lost. So why don't you get into the fight, having 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 your shoes prepped to share the gospel? Now let me just blow through the next point very quickly. We've we've talked about the devices of Satan. One of the devices is the unforgiving heart. We've talked about the possession of Satan. We've talked about Satan wants to prevent the salvation of the lost. And another way Satan wants to deceive you, Satan wants to attack you, is by counterfeits. Right? Satan is a very great counterfeiter. We have Jesus Christ. We have the Antichrist. We have John the Baptist that pointing people to Jesus Christ, and we have the false prophet in the, anti, in the end time that point people to the Antichrist. We have the apostles and we have the apostles and ministers of the gospel, and we also have the false prophet who's, who's literally demons transformed into an angel of light, right? But turn if you will to Ezekiel chapter number 9. Ezekiel chapter number 9. Even the mark of the beast is a counterfeit, it is a copycat. Because remember, in, in, the, in the end time, people are forced to receive a mark, otherwise they can't buy or sell. 
But Satan actually get that idea from God. In Ezekiel chapter 9, we have, we have the context that the, the children of Israel has given to idolatry. They've defiled the, the temple. Therefore, God is, going to, uh, 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 God is going to exercise His judgment upon the children of Israel. Notice Ezekiel chapter 9, verse number 1. He cried also in mine eyes with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that, that have charge of the city to draw near, even every man with, with his destroying weapon in his hand. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, notice, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. So in Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, we find that God is instructing uh, Jezaniah, that that's what he is, he is um, talking about. He's, he's telling him to set a mark upon the forehead to everyone who's crying for the abomination, to everyone who decides to stand aside from, from the idolatry, the fighting that's going on, who's everyone is crying for justice. In verse number 5, the Bible says, And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smile, let not, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. So it's very interesting. In Ezekiel chapter 9, who is being sealed by the mark? The good guys, right? And he's selling the black, bad guys. Now in the end time, the mark of the beast, who's getting sealed? The bad guys, right? The good guys are being spared. Very interesting. Satan copycat God's idea. Most people don't, 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 don't know about that. Now, go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Now, here's what I think that Antichrist might use this story to convince people to take the mark of the beast. Antichrist may say, uh, I will save you if, you if you take that. Again, say, uh, they might copy this, uh, this account. Now, now, even the number 666 is a copycat because we found that uh, the weight of gold that came to Solomon every year was 603 score and 6 talents of gold. I don't know, maybe, just a, maybe this is just a coincidence, but I have no idea. Now, Revelation chapter 12, we've also seen that Satan, again, copycat the Noah's flood. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15, the Bible says, Revelation 12, verse 15, and the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now, without diving too deep in the end time prophecy, the woman whom people, some people believe is representing Israel, some people think he's, he's, he's a type of Eve, um, talking about the whole mankind. But, both can be true uh, based on context. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. But basically, we've seen Satan casting out water as a flood after the woman. And then verse 16, the Bible says, And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood with which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Of his mouth. So we've seen that Satan tried to use flood to destroy the woman, right? If Satan is trying to use the flood to destroy the woman, and what did God promise? He will never flood the earth. That's why the earth swallowed it up. See that Satan attempt to copy God, but he will fail. Stay at Revelation chapter 12. I try to be very quickly. Again, another device of Satan is by lying. The Bible says that he was a murderer from the beginning and a bow not in the truth because there is no truth in it. Now, Satan's lie is very subtle. You know, he tried to deceive you. He, he asking if had God, like, did God really say that? You know, Satan did not flat out tell you this God's word is wrong. He began to uh, cause you to doubt the word of God. So we see Satan as the lying aspect, the, the, the deceiving aspect, Satan as a counterfeiter. Um, but number three, I want to talk about the fall of Satan. The fall of Satan. Now, a lot of people who believe in the gap theory, they think that Satan somehow sinned, they cast out from heaven, Genesis um, 1 and 2. But we don't believe that. The Bible is clear that God created uh, 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 everything in six literal 24-hour days. Now, in Revelation chapter number 12, now, before that, let, let, before that, let me just uh, let you know what I think. 
I believe Satan still has access to heaven. Here's what we see in Job. Satan was present, uh, some of the sons of God presenting themselves against God, and Satan is accusing Job. Uh, he's walking to and fro from the earth as well. So here's what I believe. If you don't believe it, that's totally fine. It's your opinion. Here's what I believe. I believe Satan will lose access to heaven. The battle, uh, the war in heaven will, will appear at the beginning of the tribulation, at the beginning of the seven-year uh, seven period. It, this, this is what, what I think. In Revelation chapter 12, look at verse number 6. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse number 6, the Bible says, And the woman, which could represent Israel, or could... Um, Represent the whole, the all, like all mankind, and the woman fled into wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand three hundred and three score days. Now, one thing to know about Daniel's seventieth week is that seven years break into two halves, three and a half years, and another three and a half years. In the Bible, you see the phrase uh, a time, times, and a half a time representing three and a half years. We have the term forty-two month. Again, it's another three and a half years. So, I believe this is talking about the first three and a half year period that 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 a woman uh, was flying into wilderness verse number seven and there was war in heaven michael and his angel fought against the dragon the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed now neither was their face place from anymore in heaven and the great dragon was cast out the old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world he was cast into the earth and his angels Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. And for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. That ring a bell. He's accusing Job, right? He saying it's called the accuser of, of our brethren. So we've seen after this war in heaven, what, what, what I believe is, after, uh, is at the beginning of the seven year period, we, we see Satan has lost access to heaven. And now Satan still has access to heaven until that time, until the war in heaven took place. That's when he was cast out into the earth and his angels. Again, if you disagree with the timeline, it's totally fine. It's just what I think that the, 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 the scripture um, teaches. Stay at Revelation. So, number one, we've talked about the description of Satan. Number two, I talked about the devices of Satan. Number three, I talked about the fall of Satan. Number four, I want to talk about the purpose of Satan. The purpose of Satan. Now, one of the purpose of Satan is for punishment. In, in the church of Corinth, there, they are filled with fornication. And, and then Paul said, To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So one of the purpose of Satan is for destruction, so that people will come to God. And in 1 Timothy, there are people who, concerning faith, has made shipwreck. And Paul said, uh, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So one of the purpose of Satan is for punishment. The purpose is so that they will return to God. And another purpose of Satan is to humble us. If you are here uh, last Sunday night, We've known that uh, God has allowed Satan to get Paul, get Paul at the thorn in the flesh, so that he should not be exalted above measure. Now, go to Revelation chapter twenty. Revelation chapter chapter number twenty. Now, you might ask, why does God allow Satan to live? If Satan is so bad, right? He's he's a deceiver. He's a murderer. He's a liar. Now. One of the purpose to have Satan is actually to fulfill God's purpose. In chapter 20, verse number 1, the Bible says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. And he, the angel which had the key of the bottomless pit, and he laid hold on the dragon, the, uh, that old serpent, which is devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So here we've seen this angel who has the key of the bottomless pit, which is hell. He lay hold on heaven, and he put, put Satan in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. By the way, God doesn't even have to fight Satan himself. Um, but, but after God has bound Satan in the bottomless pit in hell, there, and then there is the millennium, right? Now, which makes sense because uh, God wants us to experience what the world without sin is like. That's why He bound Satan for a thousand years while we are uh, ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ. 
But jump down to verse number 7. It's pretty interesting. And when the thousand years of the are expired, when the millennium is over, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Why did God let him out again? Look at verse number 8. And he shall go out, notice, to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God of heaven and devoured them. So here we have the timeline. After the millennium, what happened? God released Satan. Why? To deceive uh, the nations in the in four quarters of the earth. Specifically, we have the term Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. Here is what God is doing. After the millennium, during the millennium, I believe there's still going to be unsaved people there, right? People might hate God because we can die. They might try to kill us and we can die. They might, they might try to uh, ruling and accusing God. So what God did, He released Satan after the millennium, millennium is God used Satan to gather all the bad guys into one spot to destroy them. He wants to wipe out the last of the wicked before we enter into the new heaven and new earth, which is the same pattern as before the millennium we have the battle of Armageddon and Satan was bound at, so that the millennium is peace. And after the millennium, God used Satan to gather the last of the wicked to, to destroy them all before we enter into the new heaven and new earth. Again, God used Satan for his purpose. Look at verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone where, where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Again, we have the final destruction of the devil. So today, if you will turn, turn to the, the last scripture, 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4. So today we've talked about the description of Satan. We've talked about the devices of Satan. We talk about the fall of Satan. We also talk about the purpose of Satan. The last point, point number five. I want to talk about the power over Satan. The power of Satan. Now you are in 1 John chapter 4. Let me read to you 1 Peter chapter 5. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, Notice, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. The Bible says one of the way to have power of sin is to resist him in the faith. Why? Because knowing there are your sisters and brothers in Christ all over the world, they are having the same afflictions. So one of the ways to fight, to have power against the devil, is simply by resisting in the faith, claiming God's word, claiming His promise. The Bible says in James chapter 4, Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. All you need is simply to be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? To resist Him, notice, in the faith. That's why we need, to, uh, we need to have put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand, to be stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles, wiles mean tricks and, de and deceptions. We're able to, uh, the only way to uh, stand against the wiles of the devil is by putting on the whole armor of God. What's he talking about? He's talking about the belt of truth. Having always the truth from the word of God. He's talking about the breastplate of righteousness. Always do right. He's talking about the shoes of the readiness to preach the gospel. As I mentioned, every time you preach the gospel, you're fighting a spiritual warfare. He's also talking about the shield of faith. He's talking about the helmet of salvation and the sword of the word of God. So in 1 John chapter 4, look at verse number 4. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 4, the Bible says... Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So, how can, how can you have power over Satan? Guess it. <laughs> right? Isn't that what I was talking about? And more than that, if you want to have a victorious Christian life, resist the devil, claim God's promise. You don't have to turn there, but the Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The Bible says in 
Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, uh, here the, the church in Smyrna has undergo the persecution of the devil. The Bible says, The devil shall cast some of you into prison, and that you may be tried, and you shall, be, you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Here's what that verse is talking about. Sometimes God will deliver you from Satan, from trouble. Sometimes He won't. If you are here last Sunday, learn to take God's no for an answer and look at a bigger picture. Notice what Jesus Christ said, In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And everyone who is saved has overcome the world, says in 1 John. And talking about the subject of demon possession, I don't believe saved Christians can be demon possessed at all. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we can be rest assured. If you are saved, we can never be demon-possessed. Now, now to close this sermon very quickly, you don't have to turn there, but before Peter denied Jesus Christ three times, Jesus Christ said to Simon Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Just like Satan wants Peter to go away from God. Satan has desire to have every one of you if you are saved. Even the unsaved. He wants to prevent the salvation of the lost as well. But Christians, Satan had desire to have you. So, but, but we shouldn't let him get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Know how Satan attacks and resist that fast in the faith because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your word. And help us fill us with the Holy Spirit to resist the temptations, the deceptions, the lies of the devil. And help us always claim your promise to be faithful in our Bible reading, in our soul winning, in our witnessing, Lord. And Lord, just help us be strong in the faith. Help us encourage each other in the faith. And I pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.